G'day and welcome to the Investor Motivation Podcast. My name's Robert Gowdy and with me today, as usual... Amy Lehman. G'day, Amy. How are you today? Good, thank you, Rob. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, what's news in your world as a financial advisor? Anything new? Uh, I'm not sure about much new. We've got a lot nearing the end of financial year, so we have to make sure we have our 40 hours of our professional development in for the year, which you know we do a lot of throughout the year, but yep. a lot coming up so as, as we near that end of financial year deadline. <laughs> yeah, seems like yeah, it's webinar after webinar and yep. squeezed in between our webinars and uh, professional development, we catch up with the odd client, which yeah. is, uh, that's why we're here and that's the, the bit we love. Very busy though. Yeah, and yeah, we are sending lots of uh, you know, very deep questions about um, tax and death taxes and lots of um, yeah, really deep tech questions yep. off to our, um, our tech support. Uh, that we use and have done for many years because you just can't know it all in this industry and no. yeah some of it's quite complex and um, yeah the complexity makes it fun which, yeah. is, which is good. Keeps on our toes and always yeah. learning, always interesting. What are we chatting about today? Uh, today we'll do a chat about being frugal in retirement and also you know understanding what frugal means and it, it means a lot of things to different people but understanding how you can be frugal but how you can also just be a little bit cheap and we just want to really combat people's mindsets and make them rethink how they are spending. Yep and uh, it's something we're seeing with a lot of our clients where there is a lot of yeah, uh, yeah, very wealthy people mm. that are still living a very frugal mindset yeah. and, and I absolutely understand where that's come from yeah. but trying to change that to not be extravagant but just to enjoy some of the simple pleasures. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right, just but we'll jump into that soon. Um, yeah, before uh, we get yeah. into that, I'll do the quick acknowledgement of land. On behalf of the Investor Motivation Podcast, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we record this podcast and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Awesome. Thanks, Amy. Now, obviously, yeah, obviously our topic is you know about being frugal in retirement um, and so we acknowledge that you know, some of the people that I'm referring to, you know, are are in their mid uh, 70s to to 80s, mm-hmm. and they've come from a time where you know there just was no money. Yeah. You know, they, they, it was just a, a struggle sometimes, you know, to put food on the table, and you know, so we're going back into the 60s and 70s, and things were very tough. Yeah. You know, there was a lot of you know we are in a regional area, so you know there was times when there were, you know the 82 drought. There was no money whatsoever, and yeah. back then there probably wasn't the assistance. So if you didn't have money, you didn't have food, yeah. and and that was the equation. That was a fact. And and we probably need to be mindful and acknowledge that there are people in our community now. Um, whilst we're you know we're doing this podcast and this topic because I'm trying to encourage my clients to you know enjoy the small things in life, mm. not being extravagant, extravagant, but not being overly frugal um, because they don't need to be but there are people in our community that we that do struggle yeah definitely cost of living especially lately it's you know very topical i heard on the radio the other day about a lady who had driven her child to school and then waited at the school until pickup time because they didn't want to run the tank down on the car oh wow so there are definitely people feeling the pinch yeah but yeah yeah, keep that in mind, but we are targeting the audience today for the podcast is mainly the older generation that, you know, are retired and should be spending a little bit more of their yeah. hard-earned savings throughout yeah. their lifetime. Absolutely. They've um, worked hard, you know, worked a, worked a whole lifetime to earn the right to retire with some of those extra things. Um, and again, yeah. I said, these can be as simple as the coffee with friends down the street. Yeah. Now, I know the mindset uh, would be, well, I can make that at home and... Uh, make it myself and I can do that for a lot less than $4.50 or $5, which is true, but it's not so much about the coffee, it's about you know, community, yeah. being with, with your friends, and I've, I've got a client that won't, who, who's a real social cat, loves catching up with people, yeah. but won't spend the $12.50 on a Saturday morning to catch up with his mates to talk about all things they love talking about, yeah. farming, trucks, and fun. Um, and that's a shame. Yeah, and you, to his credit, this chap is now doing a bit of that. And well, that's to your credit as well, I guess, coaching him to get to that point. Yeah, yep. And showing him his funds will last and that he can do those little small fun things. That's right. I said they're, they're not big issues that will have a significant impact. You know, people with good amounts of money, the things that will have a big impact is 
gifting a lot of money to family too early, yeah. buying the eight hundred thousand dollar Ferrari. That you know, they're the, you know, but obviously frugal people tend not to do those no. sort of things. <laughs> um, but the, you know, those big decisions have a big, a huge impact on longevity of money and you know how long your money lasts. But yeah. you know, a four dollar fifty coffee, whilst we know that's expensive, welcome to Australia, but it's not going to have a huge impact. You know, when you're ninety two. Yeah. And when you get to 92, the studies show that you're not going to be worried about money. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. So that was probably the, you know, the main thing we wanted to you know, speak about. But you know, what, is, what is frugal? Um, I, I think, and that's, it got me thinking when I, as I'm trying to train these people, um, you know, being frugal is different for different people. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. For me and, I don't know, my generation as well, everybody flaunts their wealth online and it's... I've, to me, frugal is being able to shop around, still buy like quality things that you need, but shopping around for the best prices for those things. And then I think the other end of the spectrum is, well, there's two other ends. I guess frugal is probably a pretty good middle ground to be in for most people. And yep. there's, you know, the lavish lifestyle that is what we see online and is tangled in front of us every day. And then there yep. is, you know, the cheap where you're, it's freezing cold winter here at the moment and, you know, there's the people that are potentially sitting on the couch under seven blankets, not wanting to turn on the heater. Right. So yes. really, you know, kind of suffering in a quality of life sense because they don't want to, you know, spend that little bit of money to be comfortable. Yep. Yep. And, and I, I think, yeah. yeah. We yep. try to get clients out of that mindset if we know that they can afford to yeah. spend the money. Yep. And we, them. Yeah. And yeah, so, I can think one of our clients that we actually helped them, you know, get the quotes for the reverse cycle air conditioners. Yeah. And had it installed. I remember that. For them to make sure that, you know, they weren't suffering, you know, in a old three bedroom weatherboard. Yeah. In in the depth of winter and uh, the cold. Yeah, yeah, and obviously, and you did those projections with that client to say, yes, you actually can afford to yeah. buy this heater and run it. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry about you know. Be, be comfortable because when you're 92, you won't think about yo. Know, am I worth three million or one or two or two hundred thousand dollars? You won't yeah. care at, at that later end of life. Yeah. The only thing that you will care about is the regrets the, yeah. of the stuff you didn't do, um, or hopefully. Like we're training our clients again, the memories that you've built up. Yeah. If we've still got our cognitive abilities at 92, no guarantees. Which we will. No, we will. Yep, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's, yeah, for those that can afford to, yeah, um, to have those small luxuries. Mm. Um, and I, was, I think for, you know, being smart with money or being frugal, it might be the difference between, um, you know, even for those that can afford, they say, well, I'm not going to go overseas for, for three months, which is obviously dreadfully expensive, yeah. um, but we'll do something um, up at Palm Cove, which is an awesome spot to visit. Yeah. Yeah. Rob's favourite, if you didn't know that already. Always. Um, <laughs> <laughs> been a family uh, great spot to visit, but that's, yeah. you know, for some people with, you know, large amounts of money, and uh, that would, you know, that can be that's not frugal, well, but yeah. that can be a Compared compromise. To the, yeah, lavish option of, you know, overseas really expensive travel. It may be, a, yeah, dom a domestic trip around. Mm. And that's great memories along the way, huge adventures and yep. what you remember for a lifetime. Yeah, and you don't have to travel far too. Um, it's more about, yeah, the friends and family yeah. that you're with is where the memories are made not particularly where you are yeah. or what restaurant you went to. So, yeah, that's obviously a big part of, of, of what we're doing is trying to coach our clients that, yeah, whilst money's important, we make good good decisions, but it's the small things in life. It's catching up with family and friends are the, are the things that we will remember longer term. Yeah. Um, very good. Um, what other examples have we got of, um, yeah, of what's really cheap? Um, well, we've got a couple of examples as well on ways to still have I guess those experiences with friends on the cheap or yep. you know in a frugal way and that it doesn't have to always be to go out to a expensive place for tea if you do want to host a dinner and have all your friends come over to your house one night and then the next week it might be another friend's house yep. doing things like that just organizing dinners and still being social I think is a really the key to all of it because that's where the memories are made yep. with other people with your friends with your family and your loved ones so definitely doing that and even just getting out in your community, mm. going for walks along the river, things like that, easy to do and fulfilling. 
Absolutely. Um, I think the in terms of yeah, bringing family and friends together where mem- where memories are made. I said, mm-hmm. yeah, that can be for us two and a bit hours, and we're on the coast of Port Ferry or Robe or Warrnambool. Yep. Um, they are amazing places, but you know. I've been to conferences by myself, and whilst they're fun and you're surround, you know, with other people, some yeah. you know, some you don't know, but yeah, shared memories are always far better. And, and I said that can be just out the road camping at Taylor's Lake, trying to catch a Murray Cod. Yeah, um, exactly right. Yeah, um, but I do like Palm Cove, where the, <laughs> the fish have got bigger teeth. Um, so, <laughs> and I think the with um, children and gifting um, yeah. we've had a few uh, interesting ones over over the last couple of years where um, you know people are you know beneficiaries are going to parents saying hey need some money um, mm. early and in, early inheritance type yeah situations. early inheritance and I think there's a right and a wrong time to do that um, you know you can't sacrifice um, your, your own retirement but you still you know, our children are, are our children. You, there's no other people you want to help in the world, but you can't sacrifice your own retirement. Um, and I've got one chap that was able to sell some farming land at extreme prices. Mm-hmm. Mid-80s, it made sense for him to be generous. Left himself his home and a million dollars and was able to, you know, he said, I'd pref- you know, it's one of his objectives uh, not to hold on till the end of days, which you know, yeah. at, at mid mid eighties, could live another ten years. He says, "I want to see my kids who are you know in their sixties enjoy now." Yeah, and so I think that's a great example of, of not being frugal or not wanting to to hoard right to the end of days. We just made sure again we did the numbers. Yeah, and it proved that you know at at his age doesn't spend a huge amount anymore. Uh, the older we get, the less we need. Yeah. yeah no, I think, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that I've got enough clothes to see me out. Um, yeah. Well. That's frugal. Um, <laughs> no, fashions don't change. <laughs> so we get things from your 20s that are probably back in fashion now. Yeah, you just wait long enough and it'll come back around. Yeah. Um, so gifting's important, but yeah. do it too early and then it can be a problem. But that doesn't mean you need to be cheap or frugal with with your friends and family, or your family particularly, mm. because the memories will be made about bringing people people together. That you know, it may not be the big lump sums, but you say, "Hey, kids, um, you know, hey, kids, grab the grandies. We're all going to meet, you know, at a um, meet together for a long weekend. I'll pay for the accommodation, a couple meals out, and yeah, when mum and dad are paying, more than likely you'll get you'll get an audience. <laughs> the um, family come. The family will come, but that is the um, yeah, that's where the, the memories are made. Yeah. And so, you know, that's probably a little bit extravagant for some. Yeah. Um, but for those that can afford, you know, again, it's about building the memories up um, yeah. to have less regret down the track. Yeah. This, yeah. yeah, this podcast is really a, another big mix of the no regrets policy that we try and instill in our clients yeah. as well. Yeah, it's no, yeah, but it doesn't mean, it, it doesn't mean extravagance overspending. No. Um, and yeah, and... You know, when you mentioned you know the you know the the Instagram lifestyle, I was having a chat with a uh, um, a, a banker the you know a couple of weeks ago, and he said, "Well, he said I know people's balance sheets because yeah. you know they're clients." Yeah. And he said, you, "On face value, you see them cruising around town, you think, geez, these guys have got it made, but you know it's 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 wealth yeah. that is uh, quite often on the you know Just being funded b- funded by the bank. Um, yeah. So it's." Yeah, it's smoke and mirrors. Yeah. Um, but real wealth is where you can yeah, do the things you want to do. Yeah. And I think another really good thing about, you know, the internet and our access to it is, yes, we see a lot of the lavish lifestyles, but you also can pick and choose who you want to, you know, be viewing on your Instagram, who you're following. And you also are exposed to people that are running an extremely minimalist lifestyle. Yep. And, you know, that can be, if you see that a lot in your newsfeed and you surround your self with people that you want to emulate having that minimalist lifestyle is really really great on the balance sheet for one yep. and also being very intentional with your spending which is the way of minimalism yes can be extremely you know gratifying for yourself hmm. you intentionally choose what you spend and you do have more gratitude for that object and it can potentially bring you more joy and happiness and yep it's yeah. just another yeah savvy way or frugal way i suppose of spending and you know still being really grateful yep absolutely 
Um, so it's, yeah, I think it's, it's something to think about, um, how generous we are with children slash grandchildren. Um, I often see, you know, some, some clients want to be too generous with grandchildren yeah. that are, you know, just turned 18, 19 or 21. And quite often that, you know, too much money in a young person's hands is a little bit dangerous. Yeah. Um, because they haven't earned it, they're never going to have the respect. No. And even if personal experience for myself, when I was 18 and I, you know, was working since 15 or so, built up a bit of money and I would have just spent it on clothes, all yep. of it. <laughs> and looking back now, there's no way I would have done that. But, you know, even if when you do earn it yourself, you just, I don't know. Yeah. It's still not fully valuing it the way that you will in you know, 10, 20 years' time. Yeah, I think if money is earned, respect is built up over time. Yep. Um, but yeah, I think there was a yeah, great quote from Peter Thornhill, don't steal your kids' dreams. You yeah. know, families that go and buy, you know, here is your car, fully funded. Yep. Here is your first house, fully yeah. funded. You know, you're taking away your kids' dreams. You know, they're the challenge to do it, to build to create uh, a life uh, yeah. and to take on the challenges of you know building a deposit buying a home paying it off over time yeah you know and that's, that's where huge. i would say helping when people have learnt your know, respect of money you know to re help them to reduce debt if people can afford to do so but too early i believe can be dangerous yeah i would 100 percent agree with that yeah which which is really hard when you know house values have gone up by so much it's so difficult to buy yeah sometimes there's no choice but to help yeah for those that can yeah that's true very good any other um, things we should think about when it comes to being uh, perhaps less frugal for those that can i think really just make sure you are prioritizing what you spend your money on prioritizing you know what values to you yep if you are a young person like me and you're exposed to everything on the internet unfollow those people that you think are making you want to spend more if you know you, you, it's not within your means and yeah just try not to expose yourself to too much that makes you want to go crazy because <laughs> yep. it's very easy to have that FOMO effect yep. on life and yeah yeah and for me I think it's about it's the small things and yep. generally it's about people you know lunch date with a mate yeah, with friends mm. a coffee in the morning you meet a, you know, a group of people conversation and the old studies show that you know um, community connectivity being around people um, good conversation they're the things that people really enjoy yeah. and if that costs four dollars fifty at your cafe to sit there for an hour or, or in their premises and get uh, looked after well, i think that is that's money. cheap <laughs> it is really cheap and uh, i think there should be more of that yeah um yeah, it's cheap in every good sense of the yeah word. find the people that make you smile make you laugh and, and make you happy and that's uh, yeah i think you can be you can still be very smart with money and still do all things that make you happy yeah excellent well that's probably it for today we yeah. had our advisor meeting this morning some of the tech stuff that we spoke about around capital gains and superannuation was just boring um so well, i won't go into that one so I was gonna say, uh, you're gonna go there <laughs> no i don't need to go there too boring um and uh, that's something that we'll worry about yeah. uh, we want our clients to worry about what makes them happy what gives them less stress when it comes to money yeah and yeah at the end of the day regardless of of wealth what we earn what we have what car we drive people are just chase, chasing happy and i think that's yeah. uh, what this one was about um and uh, whilst it can be the big trips it can also be the small trips and it also can be the $4.50 coffee. Yeah, we are encouraging you to go for it. Cool. Have fun. Thank you for listening. If you have any topics you'd like us to cover, we would love to know what interests you. Yeah, um, please. So, yeah, please let us know uh, in any way you'd like to make contact with us, our website. Um, yeah, any way you like, let us know and we'll uh, do our best to cover that for you. Definitely. Cool. Thanks for listening. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. Bye. Bye.